Signs from above don't always have to be as dramatic as a group of angels shielding children from a bomb. A message from a dearly departed loved one can sometimes be much simpler. And yet, the emotional effect can be just as powerful. It was a Sunday morning in 1947. Come on, if you're coming! And Joan Goodwin and her younger sisters, Ramona and Annette, were headed out on an adventure. Wait, wait, wait! Joan was supposed to watch after us. And so we would all go out to this deep ditch out beside our house. We had gotten ready for church that morning, and we had on our, quote, Sunday best. And, uh, of course, the ditch beckoned. Joan found a frog. And I thought, OK, so it's a frog. What's the big deal? But Joan, it was just like a revelation to her. She held that frog in her hands, and the fascination was born. And uh, over the years, we identified frogs with Joan. Joan married at a young age and gave birth to a son, Jimmy, and a daughter, Donna. And through it all, her fascination with frogs continued. Oh, mother always had a frog somewhere, the longest that I can remember. My mother collected these frogs, had these frogs all over the place, but. Oh, I kind of got accustomed to it. Probably her first frog was the one that her father had made, probably when she was a little girl. And from that one frog, a collection was born. Over the years, as different things happened in her life or as we went different places, people would bring her frogs. She had frogs on dish towels, bath towels, frog curtains, frog tablecloths, frog placemats, frogs on table napkins, frogs on paper towels, pictures of frogs on the walls, frogs on her jewelry. She had earrings and necklaces and bracelets with frogs, different kinds of ceramic frogs. She had the iron frog. She had frogs inside. Big concrete frogs outside. Bedroom, kitchen. Bathroom, dining room, living room. There was not a room in her house that didn't have something that had a frog on it. I asked Joan why she collected frogs. She said, well, they're so ugly, somebody's got to love them. Over the years, Joan's frog collection grew right along with her family and circle of friends. She lived a happy life until suddenly, in June of 1991, she was diagnosed with lung cancer. They took out half of her lung and told her that it was probably the worst kind of cancer. She said, I'm not going to let it defeat me. I'm going to fight this. And so she did. And after months of chemotherapy, her cancer appeared to have gone into remission. She was determined that she was going to triumph over that disease, and she did. But she was just living for that day when five years had passed, because traditionally, cancer patients are told, if you get a clean bill of health after five years, then you're safe. It was January of 1997, and Joan's five-year anniversary was fast approaching. She said, well, let's celebrate my five years. It's going to be up in two weeks. And so we planned a celebration. Well, why don't we just have the fish fry down here? It was almost five years to the day when we were sitting out on Joan's patio. And uh, of course, I was full of the celebration that we were going to have. I'll bring the French fry. I've got to tell you can. something. And I said, well, what is it? Well, I went to the doctor's. And she said, I went and uh, had another CAT scan run, and the cancer's back. 
<laughs> that was really tough because I knew then that we had run out of time. During that period of time, friends and co-workers and relatives, everybody wants to help, but they didn't know what to do. And so I feel like that they expressed their concern and their love for Joan with more frogs. And that frog collection just grew and grew. Over the next year, Joan fought her disease with immense courage. But the day came when she could fight no longer. We all lined up by the bed, and every one of us, we had our hands on her all the way from the shoulder down to her hands. And she passed away. The day of the funeral came, and the dawn a gray day. It was one of those days when your heart's heavy and the sky was crying, and we were too. We just felt such a loss, and it just seemed like that it wasn't something that would ever go away. I watched the men from the funeral home bring in the coffin, and uh, even then I was praying, Lord, just give us peace and help us to get through this time. Friends, we're gathered here today to pay our final tribute to Ms. Joan Smith Goodwin. I was looking around, uh, just trying to find something to be focused on. She had so many beautiful flowers. I started looking at one and then the other, and there was a white ribbon sticking out away from the rest of the flowers. But it was moving, and it got my attention, and I kept watching and kept watching, and it kept bouncing up and down. the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff. I heard just a little, it was almost like a giggle. And I thought, who in the world is laughing at this horrible time? And Donna turned around, and she was motioning. She said, you're not going to believe this. Are there frogs out in December? He said, no. She said, yes, they are, too. And suddenly, all eyes were focused on this unexpected guest, a tiny Alabama tree frog. I could hear the whispers rumbling all behind me. It's a frog. It's a frog. And it sat there the whole funeral, through two preachers preaching, the prayer, and everything. And the sadness of the occasion was somehow lifted by knowing that that frog was there. It was something there that I needed to get through that funeral, to get through the next few days. If I could have gotten closer to it, I would probably have found wings on that frog. After the funeral, everybody was looking for the tree frog. Nowhere. It was vanished. It, just like it appeared, it was gone. <laughs> so we, we all like to think that that was, you know, Mama sitting there with us. And, and I, I fully believe that she was. After the funeral, when we did try to determine what to do with Mama's frogs. There was no question as to where that first frog was going to go. We had to go with Mama. I still like to go to the cemetery three, four times a week. And uh, don't always take flowers. Just go out there to spend some quality time talking to Joan's spirit and uh, Reliving the times when Joan was with us. Yeah. 
Uh, looking at the frog seems to bring back all of that. Although Joan's family misses her daily, they can't help but smile when they think of the frog who attended her funeral. I think one of the most amazing things was it's Alabama and it's December. They're predicting snow outside. Tree frogs are not out and about anywhere. <laughs> so it, it had to be a miracle that it was there. The Lord just sent that frog to us to lighten our spirits, to let us know, well, Joan's up here and I'll just send you a little reminder of her. And you know, ever since that time, any time I see a frog in any form, anywhere, that's my reminder of Joan. <laughs>